Sean, colleagues in 2010 broke this down per actual lameness disorder. So on the y-axis we have the cost and on the x-axis we have three different uh, major diseases that affect uh, dairy cattle lameness. So we can see that sole ulcers cost about $200 per case, digital dermatitis cost $133 and then foot rot is $120. So. One problem with lameness is that cows can get uh, multiple sole ulcers um, on different hooves throughout their lactation. Same thing with digital dermatitis. They could have reoccurring cases. So this is just per case. So it's pretty expensive uh, for producers. When we get into detection of lameness, producers are not good at detecting lameness. It's not their fault. We're just humans have really poor poor senses. They've actually done some studies where four out of five lame cows are not detected uh, by producers. So that brings us to precision dairy monitoring technologies. Callum Eastwood in 2012 defined precision dairy monitoring technologies as the use of information and communication technologies for improved control of fine scale and physical resource variability to optimize economic social and environmental dairy farm performance. So what does that mean? It's a pretty long definition. That means that we have a cow, 568, and we have something on this cow that we can measure. So here, we're gonna measure an, her activity through an ear tag. That activity information, so think of a Fitbit. This cow's wearing a Fitbit in her ear. This Fitbit is going to continuously relay information up to the computer. If she has, all of a sudden, seven to 10 days, she has a normal baseline, normal activity, and then all of a sudden she has a spike, a spike in her activity for a day, that information is gonna combine with information in the computer that's on the farm. It might combine with economic information or other information that has come out of herd management software. It'll say, you know what, two days ago, she was confirmed pregnant. She's actually not in heat. That's actually what a spike in activity means with technologies, they're usually in heat. Something else happened on the farm that caused that, that increase in activity. Or the computer will say, 21 days ago, she was bred, she was in heat and she was bred. She didn't settle, so yes, she's in heat. From there, it can do one of two things. It can alert the producer with um, an alert in the software that says, hey, 568 is in heat and you need a breeder. Or it can autonomously sort the cow out from the herd and call the breeder and say, please come breed 568. So that is what precision dairy monitoring technologies are. Currently, the way that we're detecting lameness it th is through visual observation. That's the gold standard. However, visual observation is uh, subjective it's time consuming, it's costly, and we're terrible at it. So that brings us to automated detection of lameness using all of those technologies. But we need to step, take a step back. Before we actually start going out and detecting lameness, that is our, our goal, we actually need to define what behaviors we want to evaluate to detect lameness. And that is what this study is that I'm gonna talk about today. This study was conducted at the University of Kentucky. This is just an aerial shot. I'm very happy to be at the Southwest Regional Dairy Center because we have amazing facilities. These facilities are from the 60s and are pretty old. So we have, at the University of Kentucky, they have a top barn that holds 50 cows in that there was dual chamber cow water beds as a freestall base. In the bottom barn, there is 50 stalls that have rubber filled mattresses as a freestall base. And then in the middle barn, there is a raised shared feed bunk that the cows are eating out of. So just remember, I already said it, Fitbits for cows. When I'm talking to the public and they ask me what, we, what I do, I say I use Fitbits for cows to try to detect disease. Um, I really only focus on lameness, but uh, maybe in the future I'll focus on something else. So, most wearable technologies that you will see throughout the presentation that detect things like activity and feeding time, those are through an accelerometer. 
The easiest way to think of an accelerometer is in your Fitbit. How many people have Fitbits in here? Anybody? I want, I don't have one. I really want one. So just think of Fitbits for cows. So all of the um, precision dairy monitoring technologies that are on this cow are what I used to evaluate behavior. So on the left rear leg, this cow wore an ice robotics ice cube. This measures things like lying time, standing time, lying bout. So how many times the cow gets up and down. Total steps and then total motion, which is their, just their activity indicator. The right rear leg, this cow has an Affiact pedometer plus. This measures lying time, standing time, rest bouts, steps. And then this also ties in with a parlor at the University of Kentucky. The front leg has a, the front right leg has a track a cow, but ENGS systems. This track a cow determines things like lying time, lying bouts, and number of steps. There's also a cable in front of feed bunks. If a producer has this system, there's a cable in front of the feed bunk. So as a cow steps into the feed bunk area to go and eat, this will say, hey, 568 is in front of the feed bunk. So it's not true eating time. It's just time at the feed bunk and feed bunk visits. The left leg is Cow Scout um, by Gia. If anyone's been to the farm, they've seen the green collar. This is the green collar, but it goes on the leg. It's through the same company. It determines activity. This just determines number of steps. On the cow's neck is an HR tag. This HR tag determines rumination. Um, it's basically like the Shazam app. If anyone has Shazam, it listens for rumination. And so it can determine rumination time in minutes per day. There's also an accelerometer in it, so it can determine total activity. The collar that we have at the dairy, because our cows were two, we also have an HR tag. However, we have an updated version, and that updated version determines rumination time solely through an accelerometer. Inside the cow, we have a DVM bolus, the only United States uh, company that I worked with during my PhD. They have a DVM bolus. This uh, system measures reticular rumen temperature. In the left ear, there's a cow manager sensor by August. This measures eating time, rumination time, and then activity. So it measures uh, low activity, activity, and high activity. On the right ear is SmartBow. This measures rumination time, lying time, and then again, the three different activity levels. In the parlor at the University of Kentucky, there's AffiMilk MPC Analyzer. So we can determine daily weights, just like in our parlor here at the Dairy Center, we have daily weights. And then using spectroscopy, we have um, in, the, in the parlor through AffiLab, we can determine fat, protein, and lactose. And then in the exit alley, there's an AFI way that determines uh, daily body weight. So we conducted this study from the summer of 2014 to the summer of 2015 with 123 Holstein cows. If their days in milk were less than 14 or greater than 400, we deleted that data. We didn't, did not want transition cows or really, really late, late lactation cows af affecting our data. And then we included both permiparous and multiparous cows. So now let's actually talk about some materials and methods um, and results of this study. So our objective was to compare behavior and production varial, variables as cow gate changed to evaluate potential usefulness in gate change detection. When producers evaluate lameness, they have a very simple system. So one, two, three, four, or five. Some even do, she's lame, she's not lame. Not lame, lame, severely lame. So very simple. However, if everything that I've talked about uh, in the beginning of the presentation, lameness is not that simple. It's very complicated. So we used a gate scoring system that determines six different gate aspects. So I evaluated six different gate aspects on a score of one to five. So one being a healthy, sound cow, five being a severely lame cow. General symmetry is just how they walk. If they walk very smooth, very fluid, or if they're pretty choppy when they're walking. Tracking is what you saw in the video when their back foot falls in place of where their front foot used to be. Spine curvature is just their back is arched. Head bobbing is just how much they bob their head. When cows are severely lame, they will bob their head down and up and that propels them forward. It helps them move. 
speed, just how fast or slow the cows are walking, and then abduction, adduction. That's, as a cow is walking, she will swing her feet in towards her body or out towards her body, and that is what abduction and adduction is. In the past, when other researchers have used this gait scoring system, they've taken all of those gait aspects and they have averaged all of them together and they said greater than three is lame. However, that's pretty, um, it's an arbitrary chosen value. Again, lameness is more complicated than that. So we developed an expert opinion survey using Qualtrics and we asked all of the experts to indicate which weight each gait aspect should receive to classify our weighted gait score. We had a pretty high response rate of 70%, so that was pretty great. And through that expert opinion survey, we determined that general symmetry is the most important, that that deserves 24% of the weight. After that, tracking deserves 20%, spine curvature deserves 19, head bobbing 15, speed 12, and then abduction adduct adduction deserves 9% of that weighted gait score. So we used the mixed procedure of SAS to evaluate the effects of that weighted gait score, parity, days in milk, and their two-way two interactions on all of the technology uh, parameters that I discussed previously. We used stepwise backward elimination and then we kept all of the main effects in the model regardless of significance. Just some specific cow demographic information. We had an average of two lactations. Our days of milk was 203. We had 75 permipers cows and 48 multipers cows in the uh, end model. I'm not gonna go through all of the results. We don't have time today. So I'm just gonna give you a sampling of some of the results. All of the graphs are gonna be the same, so I'm gonna set them up. On the y-axis, we're gonna have our parameter of interest, whatever that may be. In this specific graph, there is an AFIAC pedometer plus rest time. On the x-axis is our weighted gait score. All of the blue dots that you see are the raw data from whatever parameter of interest there is. The orange lines and the green gray line, or the orange dots or the green gray dots are what has been uh, produced by the model. So we can see that for AFIAC pedometer plus rest time, that that rest time increased as the weighted gait score increased in the dual chamber cow waterbed, waterbed barn, but that decreased as for cows that were housed in the rubber filled mattress barn. So we have a barn effect. We're not really sure why we have a barn effect. Uh, one thing that's also makes lameness more complicated is that when cows are lame, they may increase their lying time or they may decrease their lying time. It's, it's not the same. Uh, so cows that were housed in the, in the waterbed barn, maybe they were more comfortable. Past research has shown that cows housed on the waterbeds spent 45 minutes uh, longer lying down per day than cows housed on the rubber filled mattresses. So it may have something to do with a comfort effect, but we are seeing a barn effect here uh, for gait score. When we're evaluating steps, the AFIAC pedometer plus steps, we can see that as weighted gait score increased, steps also increased. I thought it would be the exact opposite. I thought that they would lay down more and that they would decrease their steps. Something that I'm thinking is as cows maybe are taking shorten shortening strides, they're having to increase their steps because they're still going to the milking parlor. They're still having to go out to pasture every day. So maybe, that's what's going on. One thing I failed to mention in the first graph, if you look at the raw data, there is a huge spread. Cows are gonna lie down uh, anywhere from one hour to 18 hours. We had ended up having to cut off some cows that were uh, lying too little or lying too late. And that's not a technology problem, that actually if you look at video footage of cows is that they have a lot of variation in their different behaviors and the same thing goes with uh, first steps. Our track of cow steps did the same thing. It increased as weighted gait score increased. So that goes along with our AFIAC pedometer uh, plus steps per day. Something really interesting is that time spent at the feed bunk that was measured through track of cow, that that decreased as weighted gait score increased. So as cows are becoming more increasingly lame, 
they are spending less time at the feed bunk. Some other past research has shown the same thing. However, other past research, we did not measure this. They're showing that they're still eating the same. They're still intaking the same amount of food. They're just intaking it faster than sound cows. So they, they can still have the same intake. And when you look at feed bunk visits, so bouts per day, so visits to the feed bunk, those are also decreased as the weighted gait score increase. So in conclusion for this study, lameness is extremely painful for animals. We can see that weighted gait score was a predictor for a few variables, uh, such as steps and time at the feed bunk. And determining which uh, behavior variables change as gait score change is really a priority so that we can actually start to detect lameness for producers. So now I'd like to talk about uh, current ongoing research at the dairy. I don't have any data analyzed, so that's why I didn't present that here today. So we just finished a study. Uh, Alyssa Jimenez is a grad student in animal sciences department. She just finished her master's thesis work. So she evaluated the effects of a feed additive on lactation performance. We had 48 cows housed in the Kalen Gate area. So the Kalen Gates, the cows wear a very specific collar that allows them access to one specific eating area. And so we can measure exactly how many pounds the cows are intaking per day, how much they're fed uh, per day. We have uh, three times daily milk weights. And then also we sampled milk to determine things like fat, protein, lactose, um, nine times per week. We determine body condition score and body weight weekly, and then uh, drew blood once every biweekly so that we could determine just a straight blood panel. So this study just finished two weeks ago. A huge thank you to all of the students that helped on that. I think I counted 13 at any given week doing um, data entry, uh, milking, cleaning, feeding. So huge thank you to all of those students, and some of you are here today. So thank you so much. Kim Roysher is, is in the crowd, and she is evaluating four different calf hutch types on hutch temperature, humidity, and calf growth performance. So a huge thank you not only to Kim and Dr. Ellen Jordan, who is collaborating on this, but the producer. Um, they have done everything for us and have just handed us the data. So um, that's been really nice. That's on a large calf ranch up in the panhandle. So we have uh, temperature, and, temperature and humidity loggers outside of, of 120 calf hutches and then in two of each types of calf hutch, we have temperature and humidity loggers and uh, calf weights as they go in and have come out of the hutches. So we're sitting on that data right now and hopefully we'll have that analyzed soon. And then the last study that also just wrapped up um, a few weeks ago is evaluation of heat abatement systems on six different dairy farms. So this was a collaboration between Dr. Ellen Jordan and myself. And again, a huge thank you to the producers and the extension agents that did all the labor and students that when we were shipped all of the temperature loggers, they downloaded a lot of information. So we have a, a dry lot barn in Rains County in, in East Texas two barns in um, Central Texas, two crossvent barns, one in Dublin, one in Comanche, and then three barns up in the Panhandle um, that are two cross, one crossvent and two dry lots. And we have temperature and humidity loggers there, and then also we're able to record vaginal temperature. And are also, I am sitting on that data, so hopefully we'll have that analyzed soon. So with that, I'd like to thank you all for sticking around for my presentation, and I would like to entertain any questions you may have.